Hi there, I'm John Shields and welcome to Chesapeake Bites. Today we're going to do a really interesting recipe. Um, it's a Haitian style blue catfish with tomatoes and all kinds of wonderful flavors and fish peppers. All right, so let's get this started. Traditionally, if we were going to do this in Haiti, we would not be using blue catfish. We might be using a grouper or a flounder, but I found that the, the blue catfish will work very nicely. So these early parts of this recipe are kind of important because they're a little bit different than you'll see other places. Right here I have uh, some water, very cold water, with lime juice. It has one lime that's been squeezed in there. So I'm just going to dip them in there really, really briefly to rinse them off and quickly dry these a bit like so. Here you go. Get that out of there. So really, you just kind of taking a little bit and wiping the excess moisture off. And so you probably say, well, why are we doing this? Well, there's a number of different reasons at this point. Often when you're making a fish dish, you'll be kind of like frying it or broiling it. But think about what we're doing right now. Okay, I'm going to take another lime and I'm going to squeeze some of that lime all over top of the fish. Okay, beautiful. And then I have some flat leaf parsley. It's also known as Italian parsley. I'm going to take that and I'm going to rub it into the fish. Just like that. There you go. So actually what's happening you might not be able to see it right there, but the fish is actually starting to cook. Think about ceviche or something. It's the citrus from the lime that's sort of cooking it a little bit. Now we're going to get the sauce for this started. Okay, what do we need? Well, first we need some butter and a little bit of olive oil. And of course we use our local olive oil, which is Dimitri's, that we can get all around the Chesapeake region and just going to turn that up a little bit and to start maybe one small onion um, just diced put that in and then you can't make a nice tomato sauce without some garlic garlic is good it says a couple tablespoons but you put in whatever you like you know i have many uh italian friends who said they, they attribute their longevity to eating more and more garlic and more and more olive oil. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Um, okay, so we're going to get this started to saute. While that's happening, I better finish up the tomatoes. So I get, we were at Glenville Hollow Farm, and their tomatoes and their corn this year, I shouldn't point the knife, but this year were so good. They really, really were. All right. And they're full of flavor, really are. Now, let me tell you a trick in case you were getting your tomatoes and you say, well, they're not so much a flavor. What you could do is um, do exactly like I'm doing, dice them up very nicely, and then put like maybe a couple teaspoons of tomato paste in while you're doing it. It'll just bulk up that tomato flavor. It's a good tip for whenever you're doing anything with tomatoes and you need a little bit more oomph there. Okay, put my tomatoes here. And you may say, well, wow, that's a lot of tomatoes. Well, that is actually primarily the, the biggest part of this, this dish here and especially this sauce. Okay. Now you can put anything that you want in. If you wanted to put a pepper in or something like that, green bell pepper, red bell pepper. Um, again, I was down at the farmer's market and they had gorgeous corn. And so I think there's nothing better in the summer or the end of the summer than tomatoes and corn. They go together very, very nicely. So I'm going to put that in. And then we have a fish pepper. Now, fish peppers, um, some people say they actually originated in the Caribbean uh, and they were brought here um, by the enslaved people. 
and uh, they were grown a lot on the eastern shore. So this, the, the, that whole tradition has been kind of resurrected, and it will be wonderful uh, for this particular dish because these hot peppers go so well with fish. Um, in Miss Lillian, uh, who is a leader in the Haitian community down in Florida, she gave me this recipe, and she used an even hotter pepper. It's called the pinook. Um, but we're going to use the fish pepper. Now, I always tell you, know your audience. And, you know, if people are a little bit scared of um, really hot things, what you can do is use either less pepper or take the seeds out. Because where you're going to get most of the uh, heat from is from the seeds. Um, like someone who wants to be a little bit more careful than I am, um, might want to use gloves. You could use some, you know, some of the, the latex gloves when you're doing this because if you get these, the heat from these seeds in your eye or anything, it's not good. So just make sure that you wash, wash your hands well before you touch any part of your body. Got it? Okay. Oh, this is smelling good. And if you notice, I only put one pepper in because two of them would be really, really scarily hot. Okay, next are the tomatoes. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, I'm telling you, already the heat from the pepper in the steam got my eye going. So this is, this is going to be a spicy meatball, I'm telling you. Okay, get that going there. And then I'm going to put some freshly ground black pepper in there. And I think I might just put myself a little bit of salt in there as well. And then we're going to just let all these vegetables kind of simmer down, get a little bit soft, and then we can complete our sauce. All right, look at this. So the tomatoes kind of are softening and rendering all their juices because this is really where the sauce is going to come from. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of orange juice. Um, gives it a really nice flavor for this particular dish. Bring that like that. And now we essentially are going to be poaching um, the fish fillets. So I'll put that in, put one there, tuck that right in there. And that one, and that one. And then, essentially what we'll do, again, it's sort of like poaching, but I'm basting it. And we're going to baste it with the pan juices here and cook it through. While that sauce was cooking, you might not have seen it and or noticed it, but the fish was cooking a little bit as well, just from the lime juice um, that we that we put on it. So that's pretty much it. You know, this is, this is all we have to do to, to essentially make this, make this sauce. We're gonna probably, I'd say like for a nice size filet, um, you're gonna take about five minutes, five, six minutes for it to poach all the way through. And I generally make this dish sort of just when I'm getting ready to, uh, to serve because as soon as it's finished, as soon as the fish is nice and flaky, pull it off the stove for a second and then you're ready to serve it. Uh, sometimes I serve it with um, uh, white rice. Um, I've done it with farro before. Um, I've even done it with um, a kind of grits made some cheesy grits and, and laid this up with the tomatoes and everything with it. So it really is, depends a lot on what you like and what kind of starch you'd like to go with it. But um, this is, the, this is the, the technique, this is the thing, and, and I love it because it's really different than most of the cooking techniques that I've discovered around the bay. So we're kind of bringing something coastal up and using um, that with the blue catfish, which we all know is an invasive species. And it's so important for us to get out there and use the catfish any way you can. Fried, fish and chips, 
um, broil it, whatever you could possibly do with it, because we got to get those little creatures out of the bay. So in the meantime, we'll let the, the little blue cat poach and um, then we'll be ready to eat. Okay, they're looking very, very good. They're nice and flaky and uh, cooked through, but not translucent. So really, this is all you have to do. Whatever, as I said, protein or starch you would like to use with it. Just nestle the fish right up alongside of it. And make sure that you serve plenty, plenty of this delicious sauce. Um, the sauce goes well with the fish, but the sauce also goes very well with the starch. And if you have any le left over, just save it because you can use it for almost anything. So anyway, again, we took something that comes from a different region, um, like from Florida, and a cooking technique that comes from Haiti, but puts together all the wonderful ingredients that we have here at the Chesapeake Bay, and also um, this blue catfish that we want to get out of the bay, but that is so delicious to eat. So when I was at the farmer's market, we have Captain Don there, and he's a local seafood guy, and brings seafood right to the market. So you can get all these ingredients right where you live. And as I always remind you, get out there and get ye to the farmer's market. You can also look at marylandsbest.net on the internet, and they often have a whole great list of farmer's markets and um, produce stands all over the Maryland region. So until next time, get out there, cook! Thanks so much for watching. We hope that you got some ideas to recreate in your own kitchen and learned a little something along the way. For more information on our common table and our mission to eat well, protect our environment, and rebuild the local food economy one dish at a time, check out our website and join us on social media.